Pursue the training that is best for you, not what's best for somebody else. Hashtag Surging Forward. You're listening to the Surging Forward Podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Surging Forward Broadcast, where we're helping you to have a positive you and a negative world. My name is David Valentine, and I'm here to help you see the value in the job you do and how you can keep surging forward. again and welcome to the surging forward podcast this is dave valentine and i'm always happy to be back with you again this is episode number 84 and today i'm going to be talking about don't wait to be trained so i got a cool story to share here and uh so i think you're really going to enjoy this one it just because i like sharing the real life stories of what real people are going through and that's really what I love about Surging Forward. Um, when I first started it, I never thought of all the real interesting and, and, and great, wonderful people out there that I would meet. Uh, maybe not face-to-face, but we meet through you know, email, through uh, DM messaging, and all that fun stuff. And so it's really it's interesting. I set out, and, and I'm going to tell you, when you set out to serve others, it's amazing how you end up getting served. I'm, I'm really looking forward to what uh, the good Lord has for me in the future because the encouragement that I get from so many of other people out there is just amazing. And here I'm the one that set out to do the encouraging. So I want to thank you all for, for getting back to me and for your support. And uh, hopefully this podcast is going to make a little bit of difference in your life. And if so, Make sure you pass it on to somebody because uh, that's how we're finding out about it through, uh, you know, just uh, word of mouth and different things like that. I've had to cut back on. I was trying to advertise a little bit on Facebook and a little bit of things like that, but I've had to cut back quite a bit just basically because of time and finances. And so I really wanted to devote more time to developing some training materials and getting some things out there. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about today, about not waiting to be trained. And this is based on an actual email that I had from an individual. And uh, I'm just going to call his name Ron. That's not his real name. But uh, you know, unless somebody gives me direct permission, I'm not going to put their real name. But I'm hoping maybe him and I can get together for an interview this summer um, when I slow down a little bit. Of course, he works in HVAC, so that'll probably be his busy time. But again... Those of you, if this is your first time listening, I want to welcome you to the Surging Forward Podcast. This is a show that creates a positive view in a negative world. You know, we always get caught up in this craziness of this old world, and sometimes we don't have a place to go. This is a safe place where, hey, it's not, I don't want to say a safe zone, because, hey, there are no safe places in this world. You know, this world is just full of craziness. But it's a place where you can go to get a positive message so you don't get bombarded with that negative crap all the time. I mean, that's just, it seems like people are proud to tear others down and and nobody wants to train you. Nobody wants to, you know, give you the right advice. Um, And and some people don't even have a person to go to. I have, uh, I've really been shocked at uh, some of the people I've been able to coach lately. I'm going to be talking about that, that, you know, as I coach them through, they've never had anybody take the time for them. And, And just, I just share my experiences, but yet my experiences are not your experiences. So you have different experiences, and you need to figure out what your dreams are. So that's part of what we're going to be talking about in not waiting to be trained. In other words, not waiting around for somebody to give you something. You need to learn how to go out and get it and make sure you go to the right place, not where you think you need to go or where somebody else has gone because you're going to pursue someone else's dreams. That's not what we want to do, my friends. So 
We're going to be talking about that today. Uh, great, exciting episode. I'm still recovering from getting back from the California apprenticeship competition. It just, I was end up watching the Facebook Live that I did. It, I posted on Surging Forward and I've gotten quite a few comments on it. People said, wow, Dave, you sound like a newscaster on there. It's like, my gosh, you were just really into it and killing it. I'm like, really? So I, I, I didn't watch it myself, okay? So I went back last week and I watched it and I almost had to laugh. I went, oh, my God, I can't believe I published that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I got a lot of good comments on it. So it's like, oh, well, uh, that's cool. No, I'm not a news reporter. I'm not a big-time guy. Uh, I don't think I really did very well, really. But, uh, hey, it was fun to do. And, you know, as I look at some of these things out there about the opportunities that are out there for those that are pursuing the trades, if you're young in the trades right now, if you've been in the trades for 10, 15 years, or, hey, if you're like me and you've been in it for 30 or 40 years and you're on your way out, no matter where you are, you can make a difference in the trades. And that is what's exciting because you can start with nothing and later on own your own multi-million dollar business. A lot of these big contracting companies were started by somebody who barely had a high school education. And that's what's exciting about it. No, I'm not knocking college. It's a great thing. Uh, my two kids went to college, and but they took something that was um, pertinent to where they could have a career in. Uh, not something to where they can end up working in a vape shop or, 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 you know, working as a store greeter at Walmart or anything like that. Again, I'm not knocking those careers, but if you have a college degree, you're going to really have a hard time paying your loan off, you know, working a low-wage job. It, it's going to be a tough time. But I'm going to be talking about that today in the trade. So when I talk to people throughout the week, and, and I talk to quite a few people, I get emails, and I try to answer all of the emails. That's just something I make a point of doing. Um, I get a lot of them that you know contact me through the Surging Forward website uh, from all over. And those of you that don't know, we do have online classes for you that are renewing your license and different things like that. I need to put that plug in there because uh, I'm hoping I, I need to start making a little bit of revenue. After doing this for about a year and a half, um, all my spare time has spent either coaching others, teaching others, getting ready for the podcast, and then day in, day out, day in. And, you know, I teach at night. So, you know, and I work full time during the day. And I'm figuring maybe one day I can quit my full time job and I can just do this all the time. But that's not in the very near future. That's way, way down the road uh, because. Like I say, I get told by my wife all the time, and I have a very wonderful wife. She's helping me out with a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff that I haven't had time to do. So she's getting involved with a lot of it. So it's taking two of us to keep up with all the stuff that's going on. So if uh, you feel so inclined, hey, support us by going to the website at surgingforward.com and uh, take a code update class. If you're looking at getting your contractor's license or or you need some other kind of course for you know, running a business, I'm hoping to put together a package one of these days on running a business. I'm still working on the calculation course, for crying out loud. Um, it's just amazing how fast time goes by. But let me get into the episode here, because I'm really excited about this one here. Um, you know, again, Ron, that's who I'm going to use his name as this time. And once I start reading this, uh, he's going to know who he was. And uh, again, I'm really happy. He was really concerned. He goes, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, I'm writing a book. And I said, hey, we all have a story. It's a very fascinating book. And you're going to see why also, because again, I'm going to share this with you. You see, a lot of us, we go through life and, you know, as I go through the week, a lot of people keep asking me that question. It's like, how do I keep surging forward? What does that really mean? You know, we live in this fast paced world, just like what I was talking about before. It's like, bam, 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 bam. Time just goes by and you're expected to produce, yet Nobody wants to take the time to give us the training that's so often needed in order to advance our careers, let alone just do the basic work that's required for whatever particular skill set you're at. But even we we do try to get the training, we're often hit up with all these crazy promises and guarantees that they just seem too good to be true. And, you know, you have nobody to consult and talk to with, and so you get sucked up in some of the con stuff and the scams. Because 
you don't have anyone around you that's really looking into your best interest. You see, they don't they have their own interest in heart, but not necessarily your interest at heart. And so that's what I really pursue with my coaching. I I don't give you what I think is best. I search for what is best for you. I just help you find the right answers, you know, for yourself. I don't really give out answers. That's really the bottom line truth. And you know, I do a lot of that by just asking questions. But during one of my coaching some of my coaching sessions, you know, what I find out is that many people are pursuing someone else's dreams, but not their own. Because they never really stop and think about what their dreams are or or what might be best for them. So they jump right into going to college, and and they get into all this debt, and they don't even know what they're taking in college. You know, I I love this thing where they say, well, just go to college. Don't worry about what you're going to take. Spend all this money. Take all these courses, and you don't know what you're going to take. So after the first two years of college, and the person still doesn't have any idea because he's so overwhelmed with career choices that he says, okay, uh, maybe I'll do this, maybe I'll do that. So they spend another four or five years taking courses that aren't even relevant with what they're doing, and, and they rack up thousands and thousands, sometimes hundreds of thousands worth of debt, and, and it's just crazy. And then when they get out of school, you know, they weren't working all this time. They go through five, six, seven years sometimes. You know, yeah, I know we're supposed to graduate in four. But some people are going five to six to seven years. And then they get out of college and they get a 10 to 15 hour job. And where well, there's no future, no growth. And it's like, how to where am I going to pay these loans off? It's like, wow. And I'm going to tell you, my friends, there's also a lot of trade schools out there. And I'm not going to mention any names. But uh, if if you were to talk to me about some of them, I would say, hey, look, be careful of the promises that they give. This is where, you know, you would pursue to get the best benefit. There's a lot of schools out there for HVAC and electrical. They charge hundreds and thousands of dollars. And it's great. You get a certificate of completion. And they promise that you're going to get all these high-paying jobs. Yet, the trades are very different because it's not like what people think they are. You have to have skills and you have to have job on the job training and the trades that require you to have a license. Most states, you know, require that you have to have a license in order to even work in the field. Oh yeah. It's not like I can just go to job and say, Hey, you know, you know, you get your big John job like engineers and lawyers and all that. That piece of paper, okay, that's your that's your well that's your way in. Okay, you go get your P E and all this good stuff, that's still a license. But you have to have that before you can even take it. Trade's a little bit different. You have to have actually worked in a field. I have to have that skill. And so you get out of this school, you go to get a job, and the guy goes, oh, well, okay, that's great. you got a great education, but what do you know how to do? See, they're going to not pay you to just have the knowledge. They want to see what you can produce. So then you're right down at the bottom level again. you got to pay all this stuff off. So that's where, if you're going to go into trades, I really promote the apprenticeship programs. Find out about an apprenticeship program in your area. So I want to share a story, you know, before I get caught up in talking about scams and, you know, different things like that. I want to share a story of one of my listeners that was sent to me as I talked before. And again, I changed his name, but uh, I look forward to having him on the show uh, one time this summer once I get caught up a bit. And whatever that means. Um, Every time I think I'm getting caught up, I get more stuff put on my schedule. I think I'm, you know, almost done with May already and it's only april right now so again here's how it went all right so basically he just dropped me a line through email and he wanted to thank me for doing the podcast um and it really you know how it really influences them and he loves hearing about it so that was really kind of nice because i I like to know that i'm making a difference i hear that constantly and that just really makes me help to motivate me to keep surging forward and to keep doing this podcast but He just wanted to share his story so far and reaffirm how some of the topics that I've been talking about are so true. You see, he's going to be 32 this year. So, again, he's still young. Got a lot of things going on for him. And uh, I can remember when I was 32, I was still pushing along. I was working out in the field, and I was contemplating actually going in the office by that time. But uh, I'd already had my own business and uh, worked it a couple times and I was working for another company and, you know, it, it been through my share of ups and downs also by that. But 
He had only been in the HVAC trade for nine years. But he has his journeyman's card, you know, and he's hoping to go sit in and get his master's license in June. And those of you that don't know what a master's license is, some states have a journeyman and a master's license. Now, some states only have a journeyman and a contractor's license. So, again, if you're looking to take your test in any state and you want to get some information about it and have a hard time researching it, get a hold of me. We can help you out with that. But, um, again, he said before all of that, now this was his words, not mine, he said he got tricked into the college scam. Now, again, I don't think all college is bad. I think there's a lot of good things in college if you know what you want to do. You know, if you have that mindset that you're going to have to buckle down and study and you're just going to have to really hit the books and you know you have your goal set out. But if you don't have a goal set out at all, um, it's really going to end up, you're just going to be throwing money down the drain. I mean, that's like throwing money at the lotto and say, okay, maybe I'm going to get a great degree in college which is what so many schools, they just push these people to go to college and they have no idea. But the trades is something where, you know, that you can try to, to find, you'll find something that you like if you like to create things. So they graduated from a private college with a degree in exercising or, you know, science and so forth. So it's like massage therapy, whatever the case may be. So when he graduated, he attended beauty school and he passes state's massage therapy license he got through all of that so by this time he's 22 years old and he's finally out in the world and he's working a job but he spent so much time preparing you know for the job and you know it was really cool because he didn't have to dress up or do anything to go to work but the thing is he did this for eight months and then all of the sudden in the mail the student loans hit well yeah they, they, they want their money back. It's it's really cool because we get hit. We, we get bombarded with this thing. Oh, just get a student loan. Get a student loan. Hey, you're 20 years old. Here's all this money. Not a problem. You know, hey, live it up. Have a good time. Party. No big deal. But the thing is, the man always wants his money back. You see, my friends, there's no free ride. We don't get the free money. And just as he says here, he, he just couldn't make the math work. There was just no way. You see, he's 23 years old, and he's only nine, He's already $95,000 in debt with student loans. Not including the uh, money that his wife had been t- attending for the same school. You know, they're newly married. They're trying to start a family. But, I mean, when I was 23 years old, um, you know, my wife and I were looking at buying our first house. And it was a fixer-upper. Okay, yeah, my wife went to college, and, and she had a good job. She was working in a medical field, um, and I'm struggling around working in the trades. But, you know, we couldn't afford nothing expensive, but we could at least afford a, you know, a, a decent place to live. And, and it started us out. I mean, once you pay off the student loans, you got no equity. There's nothing there. And the thing is, you still got to pay rent to live in a house, too, on top of that. So, I mean, you're talking, he's pretty far in debt right here by 23. So he wasn't sure how he's going to pay the rent. Um, and the student loans, but uh, and he worked hard. They weren't just sitting around, you know, as a personal trainer. And but the problem is, everything they did was all about commissions. So it means spending tons of time in the gym, sometimes fourteen-hour days. He was saying, and maybe three training sessions. And you know, this is how he was talking about. If he was lucky, he could get all this. So it involved a lot of sales and, and trying to get this together. So his wife was working doubles as a waitress. You know, here she was going to school, but she's working as a waitress trying to make ends meet. You know, they're making decent cash, but she had a sociology degree, and it pretty much didn't give her any job. So, but, um, so this is where the HVAC comes in. He said here, he was talking to his father-in-law one day, and his father-in-law actually owned a small shop, and uh, he'd been doing it for 10 years at that point. And, you know, he had never worked with his hands, and he didn't think he was that kind of guy, you know, for dealing with tools and manual labor. He was always told that, uh, you know, it's not my thing. So, you know, he was always told that that's below him. And, you know, 
guys that do that are really kind of frowned about. We see that in the movies all the time. I mean, I was just watching a preview to a show last night. They kind of make fun of people working hard manual labor, like they're lower class for some reason. So he didn't have any experience. He really didn't even know what uh, HVAC stood for. He kind of laughs. But uh, lucky for me, there was, you know, traveling the Midwest and a building convenience store, walk-in coolers, RTUs. He started learning about all of these, and uh, he was just told to get a 7 16th and a 9 16th wrench and show up on Monday for 16 bucks an hour. That's like, golly, I don't even have any training. And uh, so he was kind of ecstatic, and he quickly learned that experience wasn't really necessary if you were willing to work hard. And my friends, that's what it's a lot about. You don't have to know everything. But, um, you know, he was being, he was in shape and he had a good worth ethic. So he did this for about three years, waiting for the best time to get back into his degree field. He, he really had no intentions of staying in the trade. So he spent the majority of that time feeling like a failure, though, because he wasn't working at his degree. Um. He felt like it was an embarrassment to his family and friends. They were always asked, where are you working now? And he would just tell them, I'm in construction. Well, you know, and, and it showed the depression. I mean, he gained weight. He started smoking cigarettes, chewing tobacco, uh, you know, doing the actual stereotype of what we see all the time. Not that, you know, hey, I'm not downgrading people that chew tobacco and smoke cigarettes. But at the same time, it's just that, that rough and tough attitude that we have. And he didn't have the passion like he had when he was studying for his degree. But he, he thought about something. He said, you know what? Let me make HVAC my passion. You see, HVAC is a very important trade because I'm going to tell you something. In the middle of summer, when that air conditioner breaks, who are you going to call? They're yeah, calling HVAC tech, and you're going to run over there now. And I'm going to tell you what, when they charge you $300 an hour, you don't blink an eye. You're just like, fix the daggone thing. Let me cool off here. I'm dying. Oh. Wait a minute, you need $10,000 for a new unit? Oh, no problem, put a new unit in. I got, oh, okay, you got a financing plan? Oh, man, I'm dying here. We're in the middle of wintertime when you're freezing out there. Oh, my goodness. Just please get that heat on out here. Oh, man, you know? Same thing with power and electricity and all that stuff. But, but that's also where honesty and integrity come in, and that's a story for another topic. I know there's a lot of contractors out there that rip people off. But things do cost money, and it takes, you got to pay good money to get the good skill. So he made HVAC his passion. You know, not necessarily doing the work, but he wanted to learn about it and try to pass it on. So during this time, he went from uh, basically what he calls a 10-foot view to a 100-foot view. He started to see the ability that it had a lot to do of, of a lot of things that he could do that his peers didn't have. He looked and said, I could do this work. I could gain technical knowledge through textbooks and other non-hands-on training. You know, he had four years of training already. College had actually taught him how to learn out of a textbook and find other information out of the thousands of pages of text that you go through. And guess what? Just like I've talked about in the past, he listened to podcasts, he looked on YouTube, uh, got study guides, got a hold of all the information he could get a hold of. And then he decided, I wanted to be a master in my craft. And guess what? Once he made that solid choice, this is his word. He said, the word got it. The, well, the work itself got a heck of a lot easier. So now he's a couple of months away from sitting in on his master's test. You know, he's been spending about 40 minutes a day dedicated to studying since January, and he's starting to wonder what's going to come after June. So when another goal has been reached, if I pass, I need another mountain to climb. He said, the more I daydream about what's next, the more I find myself drifting toward what you are doing as far as providing training to guys in the field in a way that can make them pass license exams. You see, most of my peers haven't been shown how to study or how to do studying techniques, or use indexes, or prepping study guides. He goes, I'd be willing to bet the majority of test takers don't even know 
the state provides content for breakdown in these manuals. I also found out that the state has a 65% fail rate for journeyman's exam on the first attempts. That's after a four-year apprenticeship program. So the need is there. And then he just wrote back, thanks for what you do. Wow. I mean, so his whole career just changed. So again, you know, trying to pay off those student loans are expensive. So college wasn't a total waste. It taught him a little bit about how to study. But yet he could have taken that passion a different way. College just wasn't for him. He didn't, you know, he didn't maybe pursue the right career or whatever. But it's, it's not, you know, people just downcast on tradesmen. Some of you guys have seen it on my Facebook page, on my Twitter account, and even on my Instagram account. My new hashtag, proud to be a tradesman. All right? And you also seen how I did a new thing at the beginning there. I also put hashtag surging forward. I'm figuring out what these hashtag things are about. It's kind of cool because I guess that gets on a on a rhythm and, and, and people start forwarding that and, and doing different things and start saying, hey, what does that mean? Hashtag surging forward. Wow. Hey, share your experiences. Hashtag surging forward. Share your thoughts. Share how proud you are to be a tradesman. And you know what? Share how proud you are of your tradesman. Maybe you have a contractor that works in your house. Praise him online there. Come on the surging forward say and say, hey, this guy came out of my house and did a great job. You know, you don't even have to put his name up there. What a great thing that would be. So again, it's about pride in the trade. Chinkin pride in what you do. It's not always about pursuing somebody else's dreams because we get told we have to fit in this box. There are so many opportunities out there. College is only one of them. There are the trades right now. The, the amount of tradesmen out in the field has been declining. You know what the average age of a construction tradesman is right now in the field? And this is crazy. The average age right now is 56 years old. Wow. And I just saw that statistic the other day when I was teaching a leadership uh, program and because I teach a leadership class um, and we had something like 15, 20 students in there. And the, the age group ranged from 25 years old up to about 50-something years old. Well, they were shocked. So right now, I'm not even at the average. I'm one year away, but okay, whatever. I'm not even at the average yet. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity because what's happened, a lot of the skill is dying out. I have a friend of mine right now who's uh, looking at retiring from the electrical field and his knowledge, he's just a wealth of knowledge. And I love being around him because the, the knowledge that he has, um, you know, I'm a teacher, I'm an instructor, I'm a consultant, I do all these great things, but I'm very humbled when I'm around him because he forgets more in five minutes what I've learned in a lifetime. I mean, it, it's it's amazing uh, the wealth of knowledge he has. And uh, he just grabs it and he's willing to share his experiences, but it, it's time for him to retire. Okay? And... He could have retired a long time ago. It has nothing to do with money. He just loves what he does. And uh, old Fred, he just he just literally loves what he does. And I just admire the man. Uh, again, he has plenty of money. I mean, he could retire and he's going to live a good life. But you know why he keeps staying into it? Because when you get caught up in this trade stuff, oh yeah, there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of stress. I'm not going to tell you there's not. But there's a pride. I built that. I made that. I want to help make that. I want to help you succeed. That's why I do this podcast, my friends, because it's exciting. Because I can make a difference in, okay, you know, maybe I'm not physically hands-on with my tools anymore, but I help others succeed. I, I, I'm an instructor. I, I, I love passing this trade on. I'm still involved in building things. I'm doing designs. I'm, I'm, I'm helping things get built. So that's where it's exciting. It's not just a mundane job by no end. There's so many opportunities and so many things that can change your life. So don't wait on someone to give things to you. Go get the training you need. At the same time, don't believe all the hype of what others promise you. Always verify and confirm. 
I want to close this podcast out. I want to thank you for taking the time to, again, to listen to it. Again, I'm just, you know, again, this one here went a little bit longer than usual, but uh, hey, that's okay. I, I, I'm just becoming very passionate, and some of the podcasts are a little bit shorter because uh, I'm trying to figure out something to say. Um, oh, well. <laughs> but again, keep those letters coming in. Let me know what I can do to help you succeed and to keep surging forward. And you know what? Keep getting the word out. Because again, like guys, I'm backing off on the Facebook advertising stuff. But uh, I'm still hoping you guys go out there and like the Facebook page on Surging Forward. If you see me on Surging Forward or on Facebook, connect with me. More than happy to connect with you as a friend. Uh, if you see me on LinkedIn, hook up with me on LinkedIn also. I, I've got a great present on LinkedIn. Because uh, again, I'm pursuing the coaching and the uh, speaking careers. Uh, if you need some training for, if you got a business, uh, you know, maybe in a, somewhere on the East Coast area, and you need me to come by your office and do some training, contact me. We'll see if we can work something out. Um, so, again, um, whatever I can do, that's what it's about. All right, my friends, we're going to sign it off. I want you to remember to always stay safe. And keep surging forward. That's what it's all about, my friends. And again, stay safe and keep hanging in there. Don't give up. God bless. We're going to be talking to you next week and uh, bringing another great message. Y'all have a good one. Bye.